fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hi. What tastes really good when the weather's hot? I'll tell you what, an ice cream pie made with your favorite ice cream and Betty Crocker white cake mix. It's easy as pie to make. All Mom has to do is add water and the whites of two fresh eggs, then beat and bake. Even if you've never baked a cake before, you'll turn out a high, light white cake the first time. Then, just before serving, spread one layer with your favorite ice cream and cut in wedges. And remember, the same high-quality ingredients your mom would choose herself are right in the package. Ingredients like famous soft as silk flour and pure vegetable shortening. What's more, with all her mixes, Betty Crocker guarantees you a perfect cake every time you bake. Perfect, or write General Mills, Minneapolis, for your money back. So kids, ask Mother to make a cool, refreshing ice cream pie. It's easy with Betty Crocker White Cake Mix. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. Are you still there? Since daybreak, the Lone Ranger and Toto had been riding through the Arkansas Valley, observing signs that Indians were on the move. Presently, they found the smoldering remains of signal fires and tracks of small mounted parties. Toto, they appear to be raiding parties, but the small ones... That's not good. They maybe make plenty of trouble. We could locate the main body of Indians. We could ride to Fort Mason for troops. Look, Kimasabi. You see sod house of buffalo hunters. Yes, there's smoke coming from the chimney. We'll ride there and warn them. Come on, Hilda. The buffs come. As they approached the sod covered dugout, a young woman stood in the doorway watching. As they reined in their horses, she turned and called into the soddy. Hold on, hold on. Hey, you and Joe, come out here. A masked man and Indian just rode up. A masked man and Indian? What did you say about a masked man? Right there. Yeah, sure enough. Hey, mister. What's the idea of coming here with a mask on your face? Now, we're not bandits. We came to warn you. Warn us? About what? Indians are on the move. We've seen the trail of several small parties this morning. They may be out for trouble. We're not afraid of redskins. You should get this woman to safety. That's my responsibility. Now get out of here before my brother puts a bullet through you. Very well. But I advise you to be on guard. Let's go, Tonto. Come on, Get him up, scout. The Lone Ranger and Toto permitted their horses to slow to a walk soon after leaving the sod house. Toto registered his annoyance. Feller in sod house. Stubborn fool. His name is Sage Gannett. The other man is his brother, Joe. How you know him, Kimasabi? I recognize the woman. She's the daughter of Seth Watkins, the storekeeper at the fort. Me know him. I learned recently that she married a buffalo hunter named Gannett. Look, Kimasabi, we see Indians. Them shoot guns. Who's oh, 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 got oh, oh. Five of them. They're shooting at someone in the draw below. That's right. They'll not see us yet. All right, draw your guns. We're going shooting. Get them up, scout! Surprised by the sudden attack, the small group of Indians broke and fled on their horses. As soon as the Lone Ranger and Toto raced into the draw... Some of them shoot at. Look like soldier. Seems to be wounded. Oh, oh, oh easy, 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 fella. Easy, uh, fella. You sure saved my scalp, mister. Are you badly hit? No, no. It's just a shoulder wound. Hello, get the medical kit. Ah, oh, you get it. We'll bandage your wound and take you to the fort. No. Thanks for offering to fix me up, but 
But you're not taking me to the fort. Are you a deserter? No, I... I was drummed out of the service. But you're not interested in that. Just fix me up, friend. You must be Lieutenant Jim Wade. How do you know that? You were accused of theft about six months ago. Theft from the Watkins store. <laughs> For an owl hooch, you know a lot about me. I'm not a bandit. <laughs> easy now while I clean the wound. Brace him, Tonopah. Oh, oh, do it. Oh, easy. For the next few minutes, the Lone Ranger cleansed and bound the wounded shoulder of oh. Jim Wade. When he had finished, he said... You were drummed out of the service six months ago. Why are you still around here? Uh, it's none of your business, but you saved my life, so I... I guess I should tell you anything you want to know. Well, that's up to you, Jim. I didn't steal that money. But I... I think I know who did. Huh? Who? Sage Gannett. He, uh, buffalo hunter. Gannett and I were courting Elsie Watkins, a store owner's daughter. Then money disappeared one night, and I took Elsie to a dance. I was blamed for it. Yes, I know. But you haven't answered my question. Why are you still around here? Yeah, I, I'm getting to that. Oh? The money was in a small iron box. If Gannett took it, he hid it. Because he married Elsie and took her to live in a dugout not far from here. Uh, yes, I know. Gannett wouldn't want Elsie to know he took the money. So I... I've been watching him. For months now, I... I've trailed him everywhere he's gone. One of these days, he'll go after that iron box. And when he does, I'll have him where I want him. Catch him, fellow. He's oh, fainting. We got him. Oh, All right. Easy. Get his horse. We'll take him to the fort. Ah. The armed sentry on guard in front of Colonel Nelson's headquarters at Fort Mason could hardly believe his eyes when he saw the Lone Ranger and Toto, with Lieutenant Jim Wade supported between them, riding boldly toward him. Holy smokes, a masked man and an Indian with Jim Wade. Halt! Get your hands up, mister. You too, Winston. I must see Colonel Nelson at once. This man has been wounded, and he's losing blood rapidly. What's going on here? We have a wounded man here, Colonel. They brought him here for medical care. Jim Wade, but... Who are you? Oh, this may identify me. Here, sir. A bullet? A uh, silver bullet. I see. Yes, I'm sorry I didn't recognize you. What, uh, what happened to this man? He was wounded by Indians. Toto and I drove them off. He needs immediate care, Colonel. Of course. Sentry, see that this man is taken to the hospital at once. Yes, sir. Uh, me, me help me. Over the guard, post number one. Mister, you say this is the work of Indians? Yes, Colonel. They're out to make trouble. Well, I want more information about this. Will you come inside? I certainly, sir. Any silver, easy. The Lone Ranger told Colonel Nelson how he and Toto had found Indian signs, how they had fought off the Indians attacking Jim Wade, and also the story that Wade had told them. When he had finished, Colonel Nelson said, I had no idea Jim Wade was still in the vicinity. In view of what he told you, his story rings true. Yes, it does. I intend to investigate it thoroughly. It... Later, not now. Oh, why not now? Because of what you say about the Indians. My scouts are at Fort McPherson. I, I need your services. Very well, Colonel. If you can locate the main body of Indians, I have enough troopers here to stage a surprise attack. Oh, pardon me. Yes, of course. Come in. Kimo Come in, Toto. We take Jim Wade to hospital. Doctor say he'll be all right soon. I'm glad to hear that, Toto. Indeed, I am. So am I. Well, Colonel, Tonto and I will get on our way now. You're doing me a great favor. We'll bring word the moment we find the Indians. Adios. Adios, sir. Oh, 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 oh. Hey. Yeah, this is the place I buried the box, Joe. Now give me the short handle spade from the saddle. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yes, Sage. Just to be on the safe side, you keep watch while I dig. Yeah, that's a good idea. That masked man may have pretended to ride off, then double back. He's mighty tricky. If he should show up, we'll be ready for him. We'll pick him and the engine off with a rifle. And we'll make the hole a little bigger and bury the two of them. <laughs> you get to digging, Sage. I'll keep watch. Uh, yeah, here it is, Joe. Just where I buried it. Want me to help you? No, no, it's not heavy. Hey, wait, Sage. Throw dirt back over that box. Yeah, all right. What's wrong? Look to the west. Engines. The masked man didn't lie. Yeah, you're right. The Redskins, all right. 
Get my message. No, Joe. We wouldn't stand a chance. We've got to fight it out here. Give me my rifle. Yeah. Hey, Joe, they got your horse. Let him have it, Sage. Make every shot count. After leaving Fort Mason, the Lone Ranger and Tottle followed the ridges overlooking the valley of the Arkansas for several miles. They had just emerged from a stretch of timber when the masked man pointed to the ground. Look, Tonto. Here are tracks of horses coming out of the timber. Ah, you see them. Tracks made by Indian ponies. No shoes on them. It's a fairly large body of Indians. A dozen or more. That's right. We'll trail them. The tracks may lead us to the main body. Come on, sit there. Must count. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Eating, oh, we eat and do, 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 and okay. Okay. Yep, take Mickey Mantle, born in Oklahoma, star with the New York Yankees. From out west, where a man's a man, and what a man is Mantle. Say, Mickey's been eating Wheaties for years. Now listen, here's another champion with plenty of zing in his swing. Zing! That's a service ace for champion Pancho Gonzalez, a native Californian. He hits them hard, he makes them swish, and in the morning enjoys his dish of Wheaties. Sure, lip smacking, taste tickling, rib sticking good. And there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be do, 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 and okay. Now to continue. The Lone Ranger and Toto had gone but a short distance when they came upon the bodies of Sage Gannett and his brother Joe. Their two dead horses lay nearby. The Indians were hiding in the timber. This was a surprise attack. Ah, and Indians in hurry. They must stop or scalp. Look here, Toto. These men seem to have been digging in the ground when they were attacked. Ah. Walk around that loose dirt. See what you can find while I examine the bodies. Ah, while the Lone Ranger identified the dead men as the Gannett brothers, Tonto dug in the loose dirt and soon found the iron box which he lifted from the hole. The masked man examined it and said, Tonto, remember what Jim Wade told us this morning about the money stolen from the store at the fort? Ah, money in iron box, him say. This must be it. Jim Wade told us Sage Gannett steal it. Now what we do, Kimasabi? We'll take it with us. We must go to Gannett's widow at once. Cover these men with blankets. Then we'll break the news to Mrs. Gannett and take her to the fort. We'll send soldiers for these men. Elsie Gannett stood in the doorway of the sod house with a buffalo gun in her hands. She leveled it at the Lone Ranger and Toto as they drew rein and dismounted. You get back on your horses and clear out of here. Mrs. Gannett, we've brought bad news. Your husband and his brother have been killed by Indians. I don't believe you. Tonto and I found their bodies about four miles from here. Now you must go with us to the fort. The Indians are out to kill every white person they find. No. I won't go with you. It's a trick of some kind. Get out of here or I'll use this buffalo gun. Hand me the box, Tonto. Uh, you get it from Saddlebag. Uh, here. Here, box. Where did you get that box? Your husband had just dug it up from underneath an elm tree when he was killed by the Indians. I know you're lying. I see you recognize the box. Of course I do. It was stolen from my father's store at the fort. Jim Wade told me this morning that he believed Sage Gannett had stolen it. Jim Wade? What do you know about him? I'll explain everything. Then perhaps you'll believe me. The Lone Ranger told how he and Tonto would save Jim Wade from being killed and what Wade had told them about his suspicion of the buffalo hunter. When he had finished, Elsie Gannett lowered the muzzle of the buffalo gun and broke into tears. I, I believe you. I'll do as you say. I'll go with you. I hoped you'd understand. I'll get my belongings together. It won't take long. Tell her there's a horse in the corral. Saddle it while I help Mrs. Gannett gather her things. Ah, uh, me do it. Me take Silver and Scout and give them water. Them plenty thirsty. Come, Silver. Come, Scout. Come, Scout. Hurry, Mrs. Gannett. We must leave here as soon as possible. <laughs> I'm ready to go now. I'll carry the valise for you. Thank you. Let's join Toto. 
Indians. Wait, keep out of the doorway. The Lone Ranger pushed Elsie Gannett to the side. Then he too ducked back from the door and drew his guns. He shouted to Tonto. Tonto! Tonto! There was no reply from Tonto, but the other Indians were coming closer. The Lone Ranger holstered one of his guns, reached quickly for the heavy door and slammed it shut. He dropped the heavy bar into place, then turned to face Elsie Gannett in the darkness of the dugout. I'll light a candle so we can see. Here's one on the table. There. Now, how much ammunition have you for that buffalo gun? There it is on the shelf. Only one box? That's all. Sage had planned to go to the fort tomorrow for more. That won't last long, I'm afraid. What's that? They're trying to pound down the door with heavy timber. Let me have the buffalo gun. There's a fire in the the door. You can shoot through that. Yes, I noticed it. Hurry, they'll knock the door down. I can stop that. The Lone Ranger walked to the door and carefully slid back the cover over the firing slit. He poked the muzzle of the heavy buffalo gun through and fired. That will stop them temporarily. They'll try it again. Time after time, the Indians tried to pound down the door of the windowless sod house with a battering ram. And each time, the heavy buffalo gun took its toll and drove the redskins back. Minutes turned into hours. And around midnight, the Lone Ranger heard stealthy footsteps on the sod roof. They're on the roof. Look, they're breaking through with a pig. I'll use my six guns. Stand back. Oh, hurry, they'll break through. <laughs> The masked man's gunfire drove the Indians off the roof, but only for a few moments. They soon returned. They were driven off a second time by the deadly fire of the Lone Ranger's guns. They returned again and yet again. Meanwhile, the savages renewed their attacks on the door, only to be met by the fire of a buffalo gun. Finally, it was quiet outside the sod house, and Elsie Gannett, her nerves taut and tingling with fear, sat down in a crude chair and buried her face in her arms. Oh. Why did I do it? Why did I do it? Poor Jim, he'll never know. St- Steady now, Elsie. They will be breaking. The Indians will soon make another effort to crash the dugout. Here they come. Once again, the Indians charged the heavy door of the dugout, and the buffalo gun roared a deadly requiem. As they were through to safety, the lone ranger tossed the weapon to a corner. It's useless now. Useless? The ammunition is gone. I fired the last round. But you have your sidearms. Yes. One for you and one for myself. Take this one. But you can handle it better than I. There's only one shell left in the chamber. One? I'm killed when they break down the door. Don't be taken alive. You understand? Yes. I understand. Listen, war cries. They're coming this way. Yes, they're making an all-out attack. This... This is the end. I still have six shots in my gun. I'll make every one count. Get back in the corner while I open the door. Lone Ranger lifted the heavy bar and opened the door cautiously with a six-gun gripped in his right hand. The Indians were coming like an army, riding hard and waving weapons as they shouted wild cries. I'll let them get closer before I fire. The masked man waited and watched the savage charging horde. And then a new sound came above the war cries and the thunder of hoofs. At first, the Lone Ranger thought the bugle was a figment of imagination. Then he heard it nearer. And at the same moment, saw horsemen approaching from another direction. These newcomers were no painted savages. They were men in uniform, hard-riding troopers who opened fire with carbines. Look over there, Elsie. The army. The troopers from Fort Mason. The Indians are turning. They're turning to the side. They're running away. Do you see those men riding with the leading troopers? One's an Indian. Otto, he's alive. Oh, your friend. He must have gone for the troopers. The... That other man, the one with the bandaged shoulder, it's Jim Wade. While the troopers raced on in pursuit of the fleeing Indians, Tonto and Jim Wade cut away from the uniformed men and rode to the door of the sod house. The Lone Ranger and Elsie stepped out to meet them. Oh, 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 Jim! Oh, Jim! Elsie, you're safe. That's all that counts now. Tonto told me about the money. But, Jim, can you ever forgive me? No, I never lost faith, Elsie. I knew that someday I'd prove my innocence. Thanks to the masked man I have. Jim, I see you have your insignia back. Yes. And next week it'll be captain's bars you'll see on my shoulder. When Tonto came into the fort and told what had happened, Colonel Nelson restored me to rank. And next week, I get a captaincy. Here's Silver, Kimasami. Good. We'll never be able to repay you and Tonto for all you've done. Enjoy your happiness, Elsie. 
Jim, you'd better wait here until the troopers return. Oh, you'll wait with me, won't you? No, our work here is done. Tonto and I must be going. I want to replenish my supply of cartridges. Come, Tonto. Easy, steady, big fella. Bye. Goodbye and thank you. Good luck and adios. Montel, come up. Jim. Jim, I'd give anything to know who that masked man is. I can only tell you what Colonel Nelson told me. He's the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.